Hello, here we are, ready to make the last round of the collar. So we're going to do this round with two shuttles wound continuously. Uh, you can do this with a shuttle and ball, but I've decided to do it with a method which I think saves time, because if you're doing with a shuttle and ball, you're going to have to reverse work for your rings and your chains, so you'll have to be flipping your whole collar back and forth. So I've decided to do it with two shuttles wound continuously and use... Uh, unflip stitches for the chains which means we don't need to reverse the work so we're just going to be working from the front all, all the way along so looking at the front and I'm on the left side of the front this we're going to start and we're going to start where the last chain here joins the little ring at the base of the little ring and we're just going to push our hook through and pull a loop and pass the shuttle through it and we're making a first chain of three picots separated by two stitches. One, two, a picot, two stitches, a picot, two stitches, a picot and two stitches. So that's the first chain and now I'm going to use the other shuttle to make a small ring. Three stitches separated by two picots. Two stitches, a picot, two stitches, a picot, two stitches, a picot, and two stitches. Yes, close the ring. And this is where we want now the next chain to face this way. So we reverse work every time we do a ring and a chain. But what I'm going to do instead is stay from the front like this. And use unflipped stitches. And unflip stitches are made in reverse order. So you're making a second half followed by a first half. So that's one stitch, second half, first half, two stitches, and a picot, second half, first half, and another stitch, second half, first half, like this. And now we're going to join to the center picot. Of the chain so we're going to be repeating this all the way along joining to the center picots and to make a join when you're working with unflip stitches so you go through the picot under the shuttle thread and you go and grab the thread that's wrapped around your left hand pull a loop pass your shuttle through it and as you pull your with your left hand and as you tighten this you actually want the stitch which is now can you see it it's in the front it's here at the front of the pico you want the that loop to pull back through the pico to the back like this and then you complete the join with the first half of a stitch because we're working in reverse order unflipped like this and another stitch and the pico And one more stitch. And now, see, you don't need to reverse the work and you don't need to keep winding and unwinding shuttles either. So that means you can work more efficiently, more quickly. So we're making the next small ring. Two stitches, a pico. Two stitches, a pico. Two stitches, a pico two stitches and close the ring. So the rings and the chains have the same number of stitches and the same numbers of pe and the same number of picots. And then I wrap around my left hand to make a chain with unflipped stitches in reverse order. So one stitch, two and a pico. And join. 
So through the pico, under the shuttle thread, grab where you're grabbing the core thread, which is wrapped around your left hand. Ooh, made a mess of that. Split the thread. Let's do that again. And then you pull, and then you pull until it pops to the back. Like that, so your the loop that's around the core thread is behind the pico, and complete with the first half. And one more stitch, second half, first half, and a pico. First half to complete it, and another stitch, second half, first half. So I hope you don't find that too confusing. It's a method I use sometimes with chains because it saves you having to reverse work, so you can all work from the same side. And I thought in this case it would be a good method to use, a good technique to use. But if you don't like this, you can absolutely just make your rings on one side, reverse work, and do your chains on the other side as normal. So feel free to do that if you prefer, of course. I just thought I would show you what I'm doing. Two stitches a pico, two stitches a pico, two stitches a pico, and two stitches. So that's it. We're just repeating all the way around. I'll do one more, one more chain. Two stitches a pico, two stitches and join. Complete the join. One more stitch. A pico. And one more stitch. A pico. Complete the join, which makes the first stitch and another stitch. Let's make one last ring. Two stitches a pico, two stitches a pico, two stitches, and close the ring. So that's it, repeat all the way along. So same number of stitches in the rings and in the chains. Three picots separated by two stitches, and on the chain you join the center pico to the center pico of the previous round. I'll meet you back near the end. Here I am, right near the end. So I'm going to make, that's the last chain facing this way that I'm making. So two stitches, a pico, two stitches and join. And complete the join with the first half because I'm working with reverse order stitches. One more stitch, a pico. One more stitch and that's it for the now we're making one last ring and then the last chain will be going in the opposite direction. So one last little ring. Two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, two stitches, a third pico, and two stitches to complete the very last ring. And now I'm not reversing work again, and I'm making regular flip stitches so my chain will curve in the opposite direction from the ones I've been making before. And in this last chain, I will add two magic loops and hide both ends in my last chain. So two 
two stitches it's only very short so I'm going to place them in straight away so I'm going to put them together with the knot facing left so two stitches a pico to line them up that's better and another stitch and the pico oh, I have to pull them out a little bit too short works well when they're just the right length so you can hopefully point them you know through your loop as you're pulling your stitches through uh, so one last pico pull the magic loops out a little bit again and the second half and now that's the last stitch so the penultimate half stitch not too tight Pull the loops out and complete with the very last. Oops. Ooh, can't get them out of the way. Uh, no. The very last half stitch. And now we are joining right at the end where the ring joins. So it's at the beginning of that those two rows of chains around the neckline is where we're joining. I'm gonna go on the back. Cut my threads. Make a square knot. Left over right, right over left. And then use my two magic loops to hide my ends. So I'm just got to separate them, which one's which. Okay, that's that one, and that's that one. Pass one in through. Pull to make sure I've grabbed my thread. Open it and pull. They're so fine, sometimes it can be a bit difficult to open them up. Okay, so open the loop. Pull to grab it. That's it. And open the other side and pull. Right, I'll make sure they're nice and snug in my last chain. And cut close to the work. Amazing! We are done with this lovely collar. I'm gonna press it lightly, a little bit of steam between two pieces of fabric to make sure it lies nicely flat. But that's it! The collar is done. I hope if you follow along you're pleased with yours. I had been wanting to make this collar for quite a long time so I'm glad it's finally finished and I'm happy with how it's turned out. I'll see you soon in another video. Take care. Bye bye.